We'll start here with Stephen. Kyle, I've got to kick it off a little bit lighthearted and ask you about uh, SRX and uh, Joey Logano jumping on the radio during the broadcast. Um, what were you, what went through your head the moment that uh, you heard his voice in the radio? What the hell? Um, <clears throat> that was probably the first thing, but um, you know, after that, I I, uh, I I don't even remember what he asked me, but um, you know, we were kind of in a little cat and mouse game, I guess that's what he brought up uh, with Brad and just kind of trying to figure out how hard to push and what to do uh, at that point in the race. But um, knowing there were still a couple cautions coming, uh, you just kind of, you know, try to take care of your stuff and pace yourself. And then that's right when Helio was uh, was on, a, on the bout to go to the front and take the lead. So he nudged me and got by me. So, you know, thankfully Joey was on my radio, so it was his fault I lost the spot. Um, you know, but um, we were able to make it back up later. Uh, I wish he would have come back on the radio later when I was uh, on some of those restarts. You know, he could have spotted for me. That would have been good. He actually said on the broadcast with two to go, he thought about jumping back on your radio but figured that was a bad time to do it. Um, are you going to invite him back to be a spotter anytime soon? Yeah, no, it was fine. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's if it's him or Kevin or Connor. Um Whoever else they have up in the booth there with with SRX, it's always just it's kind of lighthearted, so it's fun. You know, it's kind of neat that they do that. Um, you know, there's 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 no money on the line, there's no points on the line, none of that stuff. So um, obviously, it, you know, it's not quite as serious as our Sunday job. I'm gonna go over to the left to Matt. Matt Weaver, Sports Not. Kind of a follow up on that, having done the last two races and kind of surveyed the landscape. Uh, what do you think the future of what they're doing could look like, and you know what would you change? What do you really like? Stuff like that. Um, honestly, I feel like they've got a pretty good program um, on what they're doing. I know it's really tough on the on the guys uh, and the girls who work behind the scenes and do all the stuff with preparing the cars and working on the cars. Unfortunately, Berlin was a a decent race. We're about the only work they really got to do is uh is clean out the burnout rubber from my car uh this week you know but um 12 cars uh, you could probably do 16 at least you know it'd be cool to see more cars um i think that you know it's okay when you have some calamity uh and some crashes and stuff like that as long as you know everybody's kind of keeping safe um Stremi had a throttle stick in one of the test cars there the other day and he wailed the wall and he was okay, and Canaan destroyed the fence too at uh, at Stafford. So uh, the cars do have some some good safety aspects to them, which is nice. We're at short tracks, so it's it's not going 180 miles an hour. You know, we're going a 100, 120 maybe. So um, it's just cool that they have all the short tracks that they go to. There's a lot of great short tracks across the country that would be really fun to watch those cars go around at. Um, <clears throat> you know, Richmond actually might be too big of a racetrack to go to um, for those cars. You could put on a race there, but I think it would be a little bit too big of a speedway. Um, you know, so the short track half miles and under are, are a really good place for them. And then a uh, big picture NASCAR question. Drivers have been beating the drum, I guess, the last two years with the next gen about how you know, we're working on aero, we're working on all the underbody stuff. But really, at the end of the day, the cars are just so close, and that's one of the biggest things to overcome. Which got me thinking about IndyCar. It's a spec car, but the damper program is open for development. Is there one thing that you think we could choose on this car and open it up to kind of create a little bit of speed disparity? Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, you don't, the biggest thing for me that I feel like is is a hindrance to the car and traffic and all that sort of stuff is the underbody. Um, just. They wanted a flat sheet across the bottom, so it's the same for everybody that they don't have to police. Uh, but honestly, I feel like that's probably our biggest detriment uh, with this car is we all talked about overbody, underbody, aero, this and that for years, tens of years. Um, and we all thought the underbody aero was the way to go, but honestly, it's it's we've gone backwards. Uh, it's worse in traffic. So I feel like that stems from that and to get rid of that and just have overbody and, and what all we do there. and. The cars are all the same. You buy them from the same supplier and everything else, so they're homologated basically. Um, you know, so they got a scanning device that scans the floors. Why don't we just scan the bottom of the cars without a pan? You know, and all the rough surfaces and everything else underneath the bottom of the car. Um, but that's kind of my thing. I don't know if that really makes any more discrepancy between the field on speed. I think that's just a, a traffic thing, in my opinion. 
And go over to Lee. Lee Spencer, catchfence.com. A um, couple, uh, just really quick, you guys decided to move Brexton up um, a division. He told me the other night at, at Berlin, um, did you just kind of feel like he had exhausted the division he was at and it was time to challenge him? Um, so the Midwest swing is what we call it. That's what we're on. And when we go to some of these places with as competitive as Millbridge is, Millbridge is um, cadet class is basically their beginner box class anywhere else you know so last year we ran the beginner box class and we won at wisconsin we should have won at iowa but we got put on the berm with two to go um so i figured this year you know it, if he wants to to kind of step up and move up to the older kids class and run with the older kids because that's more so his grouping of talent with the other kids in the midwest because it's just um, I don't know if they just don't race as much or what, but the competition at Millbridge is the highest anywhere. If you can win at Millbridge, you can win anywhere. I've had multiple dads tell me that, and it's true. So, um, you know, I feel like the, the best kids in the country are there. And um, so when we go out of town, we'll, we'll bump up a class. And looking at turns one of the next two road courses, how important is it to get through turn one at Indy and turn one at Watkins Glen so you don't screw up your whole lap? Yeah, well... <clears throat> talking about cars being close and similar and hard to pass all that you know it's that's your time to make up time is on the restarts right then and there once you get through about the first three or four corners that it's over you know so that's why you see so many aggressive moves dive bombs all that stuff on restarts is to make up if you can get two spots right now that that's two spots that you're better than what you were right so um you know indy i i bet you i probably missed it in the driver's meeting here at, at 10 o'clock this morning i was still sleeping, so <laughs> trying to catch up from a, a long week, but um, you know where the restart zone is and stuff like that and try to get us a little bit singled out. I felt like the restarts at Chicago were perfect. Um, I thought that was a really good idea. We had an acceleration zone right before a corner, and then we were single file, so it all kind of kept us you know, a little bit away from each other, and, and it was good, clean racing. And once you could make up time on a guy and outbreak a guy, then you, you did that, you know, but it wasn't just four wide down a straightaway funneling into a one-lane corner. Do we have any additional questions for Kyle? We'll go to Chris. Chris Knight, CatchFence.com. I hate to bring up the truck series, but I know you are pretty vocal last week in talking about the truck series and how, how the model is right now. Are you hopeful that maybe with the new TV package in 2025, the, the business model will increase and help determine maybe who is able to get behind the wheel of a KBM truck? Um, no. I, I just I voice my opinion on what I feel, but I don't foresee it changing. So we'll just see what happens down the road and, and what uh, new TV deal there is and, and what that means. But uh, I honestly don't think it's going to be a significant enough change to make a difference. And, um, you know, we'll see what what we can do with, um, you know, with our team going forward. Um, you know, we've got the my part time races, my five races for next year. And then we've got the rest of the truck still open uh, for next year to kind of figure out what we're going to do in that respect. But, um, you know, Purdy will be back and Sanchez will be back. So, um, you know, we're, we're pretty good with where we're at. Mm -hmm. Anything final for Kyle? All right, Kyle, thanks for joining right. us. Good yep. luck this weekend.